What exactly is this Bayraktar, and what's so crazy about it? And drones are playing a key role in Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russia's invasion. One is proving so effective that Ukrainian forces are singing its praises. The Bayraktar TB2 is an unmanned, low-weight, effective, and relatively cheaper drone produced by the Turkish company Bayraktar Makina. For comparison, the TB2 weighs an eighth of the US's high-tech Reaper drone and costs around $5 million instead of the $32 million of the Reaper. To be fair, it can only carry one-tenth of the Reaper's payload, but the TB2 isn't something to take lightly. It can cruise for up to 24 hours with its payload of four small laser-guided munitions. With a height of 2 meters and a length of 6.5 meters, the TB2 is a small but killer drone. It proved its effectiveness in the global conflicts in Libya, Syria, Azerbaijan, and more recently the Russia-Ukraine war by destroying a significant number of armored vehicles and short-range air defense systems. But how did this small drone trick the sophisticated radar systems of the Russian army? According to Spectator, the most probable answer lies in its size and speed. The TBT has a smaller radar cross-section and much slower speed, making it harder to detect. The Russian surface-to-air missile radars, or SAM, are optimized for faster jets or missiles, giving TB2 a free hand in the war zone. However, its performance is getting limited as Russia continues to enhance its technology and has now shot down multiple TB2. Its price wasn't officially disclosed, but experts suggest a $5 million figure judging from Ukraine's contracts to purchase the TB2. In 2022, Turkey surprised itself and the world by hitting a record of $4.4 billion in arms exports larger than its export target for the year. This figure is larger than the annual defense budget of some countries. With a newfound success of its armed industry, the government's setting a target for $6 billion for the year 2023. But what could be the reason for such good numbers? How did Turkey's air drones progress so much that they are now standing shoulder to shoulder with giants like the US, Israel, and China? Stay with us till the end to find out. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to Visionary Builds. With a constant increase in the unmanned aerial vehicle trade from 1985 to 2014, as depicted by this chart, the Turkish drone industry isn't slowing down anytime soon. Ukraine-Russia has already created a huge demand for armed drones, with countries that are not even a part of that war stockpiling their weapons. This situation has created a lucrative environment for Turkish drones. After all, Turkey has the second largest army in NATO after the United States. Almost all defense firms on Turkish soil are booked for at least the next five years, with shifts running round the clock to meet demand from NATO members as well as their own military. While the US and Israel have restrictions on exporting their drones, Turkey on the other hand is able to make profits out of this demand due to their affordable yet cutting-edge technology. Its strategic location and NATO membership further facilitate its defense contracts with other countries. There's also a substantial demand for Turkish arms from the Middle East with top firms signing multi-billion dollar deals with oil-rich states like Qatar, UAE, etc. With rising global tensions, every country is focused on its growing defense sector. Top Middle Eastern countries, including Saudi Arabia, have pledged billions of dollars to help strengthen the Turkish economy. Seems like Turkey is getting the best of both worlds, capital and diplomacy. But was it always like that? This country, which was best known for its landmark locations and Turkish delights, is now suddenly competing in combat drones. Turkey wasn't originally a drone-producing country. That's why it had to import unarmed drones from Israel, which accounts for 60% of drone exports around the world. Turkey's interest in armed drones emerged in 2008 when they sought permission to purchase the MQ-1 Predator from the US and instead was offered the non-armed version of the Reapers. After rejecting this offer, it purchased unarmed Haran TPs from Israel in 2010. The restrictions Turkey faced in acquiring armed UAVs compelled them to find a domestic solution. With Turkey's emerging self-sufficiency in manufacturing UAVs, it has reshaped geopolitics and is a source of pride for the country. Combined with the fact that most parts are locally manufactured or will be replaced with local counterparts in the future, Turkey's dependence on foreign suppliers has reduced. The drones were not only exported but also used by the government to track various insurgent groups within and outside of Turkey. The company single-handedly behind this revolution is Baikar which was founded in the year 1984, almost four decades ago. Surprisingly, this wasn't an aviation company like you'd expect. Bicar used to manufacture automobile parts, such as engines, pumps, and spare parts. 
This changed when Saluk Bayraktar, an MIT graduate, joined Baikar, a company owned by his father. After obtaining a master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania, he studied at MIT to obtain his PhD in helicopter systems. In 2006, he wrote his thesis on UAV landing, including vertical landing, which would prove to be instrumental in the coming years. After cutting short his PhD, he returned to Turkey to work at Baikar. With his knowledge, he began directing their company towards UAV production. Their first milestone was the Bayraktar Mini UAV, designed to operate under harsh geographic and weather conditions. After a series of demonstrations and flight tests, the Turkish army ordered 19 of these from Baikar. The Mini UAV had a wingspan of 2 meters and had a length of 1.2 meters, and offered features like automatic takeoff, belly landing and navigation, and can operate at an altitude of 3,000 feet. More than 500 of these are built and deployed in the southeast part of Turkey for anti-terrorist operations. Following its success, these drones were sold to Qatar in 2012. According to Baikar, a more advanced version of the Mini UAV known as the Bayraktar Mini UAV-D, which offers a two times greater communication range and a three times higher maximum altitude compared to its predecessor is now being. In 2011, at the request of the Presidency of Defense Industries, Baikar started developing TB2, a combat aerial vehicle with a blended wing body design and inverted V-tail structure. In 2015, a video was published that showed the missile test for Bayraktar TB2. Thrust is generated by a variable pitch two-blade propeller in a pusher configuration. The TB2 drone had completed 600,000 flight hours globally. However, the Turkish army still remains the largest operator of TB2. But that's not the end yet. Turkey unveiled its most advanced UAV in the market, Bayraktar Akinci. It's equipped with dual artificial intelligence avionics that support signal processing, sensor fusion, and situational awareness in real time. Fitted with triple redundant electronics, it's capable of facing fighter jets in military operations. Moreover, it can operate at a range of altitudes starting from 30 feet to an astonishing 40,000 feet. The aircraft has 5,000 kilograms plus of maximum takeoff weight, of which 1,350 plus kilograms is composed of payload. Talking at the inaugural ceremony, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said those who refused to sell us such vehicles 10 years ago now talk about Turkey's game-changing drones that have proven their success in the field. Since then, Akinji has been sold to countries like Pakistan, Libya, while in the future, Saudi Arabia, Azerbaijan, and Kyrgyzstan are also willing to buy them. But beyond drones, Turkey is doing something really sick. They're testing their first flying car, a phenomenon only seen in sci-fi movies until now. The car named Cesare is named after the famous Ismail al-Jazari, a 12th century inventor who's said to have laid the groundwork for engineering, robotics, and hydros. It weighs 230 kilograms. According to Seluk Bayraktar, the car would take an estimated 10 to 15 years to hit the road, and 3 to 4 years to use for recreational purposes such as quad bikes in rural areas. During its tests in September 2020, the machine rose up to 32.8 feet in Istanbul. If successful, Sazuri would be a groundbreaking revolution for many years to come. Baikar is also not done with its Bayraktar TB series and is introducing another variant called the TB3. Using folding wings, the TB3 can easily be transported using carrier ships and thus are capable of overseas operations. With a total of 280 kilogram payload capacity, the TB3 can be operated from very remote locations due to its excellent communication capabilities. It seems like Turkey's UAV industry isn't slowing down anytime soon and will only continue to grow until it bypasses other major countries in the equation. Do you think that the growing market of UAVs and unarmed equipment is somewhat dangerous for world peace? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you liked today's video, kindly press the like button and turn on notifications so that you never miss another update. Stay tuned for an update on the upcoming drones by Turkey.